So Dick Cheney uh, was wheeled out over uh, the weekend to do something that he really, really loves, which is defend the global deployment of the U.S. torture program. Uh, and even with this Senate report, which came out, that did actually teach us some new things. I mean, it confirmed deaths. It taught us about uh, rectal feeding, which is, I mean, just just sort of like, you know, something that I would expect would be in some type of uh, uh, torture porn movie that I wouldn't want to see. Uh, you know, ju just these obscene policies that, we implemented, the Bush administration implemented after uh, September 11th. There's a couple of things here that Cheney's doing in this clip with Chuck Todd, and of course Chuck Todd's not challenging him particularly aggressively on, uh, but there's also a broader point that, again, needs to be made about um, the Obama administration and how we've responded to torture writ large. But let's listen to Dick Cheney, because truth be told, uh, this is the this is the best and most confident um, and most sociopathically unapologetic uh, 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 torture supporter uh, in U.S. politics still to this day. So let's, let's listen to him uh, with Chuck Todd on Meet the Press. Well, let's get to our big story, the Senate report on what some call torture, what others call enhanced interrogation techniques. Pause it. The report. Can we just stop? I mean, like seriously, can we just stop? It's torture. What some call torture, Michael. I, I, I Others would like to call it advanced interrogation techniques. Uh, you know, <laughs> some would call it. You know, I, I can't. I can't even. I can't even go. I, it's just. It's just the the perfect lack of a moral clarity in that statement is tells you everything you need to know. The fact that this has gone fully into a Sunday morning debate mode, not a absolutely catastrophic policy that should terrify us all because we're talking about violating basic ethical norms, basic moral norms, and also international law, as well as our, co our Constitution. Put together by Senate Democrats on the Intelligence Committee, it's a detailed and in some cases shocking indictment of the methods used to inter interrogate detainees. There's no shortage of critics of what the CIA did, and there has been no more forceful defender of the tactics than our first guest, former Vice President Dick Cheney. So let's get right to it. Vice President Cheney, welcome back to Meet the Press. Morning, Chuck. <clears throat> it's good to be back. Uh, well, let me start with uh, quoting you. Uh, you said uh, earlier this week, torture was something that was very carefully avoided. It implies that you have a definition of what torture is. What is it? Well, torture to me... Uh Chuck is uh, an American citizen um, on his cell phone making a last call to his four young daughters shortly before he burns to death in the upper levels of the Trade Center in New Pause York it. City. That cynicism in that answer is the defining cynicism of the Bush Cheney era. It's disgusting. Keep playing it. On 9 11. Um, there, there's this notion that somehow there's moral equivalence between what the terrorists did and what we do, and that's absolutely not true. We were very car careful to stop short of torture. The Senate has seen fit uh, to uh, label their report torture, but uh, we worked hard to stay short of that, uh, of that definition. Well, what is that definition? Definition is the one that was provided uh, by the uh, uh, Office of Legal Counsel. We went specifically to them because we did not want to cross that line into where we were violating some international agreement that we'd signed up to. Uh, they specifically authorized and okayed, for example, uh, exactly what we did. All of the techniques that were authorized by the president uh, were, in effect, blessed by the Justice Department opinion that we could go forward to those without, in fact, uh, committing torture. Let me go through some of those techniques that were used. Majid Khan uh, was then suspected of, in, uh, was subjected to involuntary rectal feeding and rectal hydration. It included two bottles of Ensure. Later in the same day, Majid Khan's lunch tray consisting of hummus, pasta, sauce, nuts and raisins was pureed and rectally infused. Does that, that meet the definition of torture? That does not meet the definition of what was used in the program. As no, I understand that, but does that was, meet the definition was, of torture in your mind? In my mind, I've told you what meets the definition of torture. It's what uh, 19 guys armed with airline tickets and, and uh, 
box cutters did to 3,000 Americans on 9-11. What was done here apparently uh, certainly was not one of the techniques that was approved. I believe it was done for medical reasons. Well, there is no, I mean, medical community has said there is no medical If you go to do and this. look, for example, at uh, uh, Jose Rodriguez's book, mm-hmm. and he was the guy running the program, right. he's got a very clear um, uh, description of how, in fact, the program operated. With respect to that, the, uh, I think the agency has answered it in its response to the committee report. And- okay, so again, the cynicism of Dick Cheney endlessly, endlessly deploying the deaths, the murders, and the terrorist attacks of September 11th to justify anything, and the ease at which he just pulls out these horrific images with no consideration that maybe a relative is watching. Maybe one of those daughters whose father did get burned alive is watching and doesn't want uh, this old, corrupt hack and war criminal to use their father's death uh, as a hypothetical talking point to defend his atrocious uh, policies. Never considering that. Then the classic Dick Cheney technique of sort of bearing you down with this false assurance and incorrect information. Now, the the memo he's talking about, of course, is the U memo, which is the you know inf- the infamous Justice Department memo that basically said, look, uh, you know, essentially anything short of death, you know, it, it, there's a wide latitude. So we're not going to really commit torture because we're going to define torture with such elasticity that it could really not mean anything per se. If I want, you know, if if I snap and I hold Matt out the window of a 12-story building in Brooklyn and I, you know, tell him I'm going to drop him and there's a hit squad that's going to kill all of his family at the same time, I could say, according to this memo, hey, look, man, I just wanted Matt to clean up his desk. And, uh, you know, I, asking politely didn't work, and I don't think it's torture because he didn't have permanent organ failure and his family wasn't killed, so what's your problem? Now, he's also saying that memo, which is a joke of a memo, a, you know, sort of classic just hack pseudo legal cover for the political policy decision the policy decision that had already been made uh, but he's saying it as if that still covers him as if that was justice department policy but of course the u memo was rescinded the justice department uh, this is from from uh, you know this is rescinded in 2004 okay this is nothing new this isn't an obama era policy reversal this is 2004 this is from the new york times justice department lawyers later rescinded mr yu's both mr yu's memorandum and a similar one written for the cia in august 2002 Uh, In a book published last year, Jack Goldsmith, who is head of the Office of Legal Counsel, made the decision to rescind the memorandums, uh, criticized the documents, saying they had used careless legal reasoning to provide national security agencies with sweeping interrogation authority. So the one he that that's like me relying on you know it, 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 you're relying on a on an outdated memo that's already been rescinded to justify things that are being disclosed now that are patently torture and you won't even acknowledge that they're torture it's unbelievable he went on in the same interview to lie about torture being key to getting osama bin laden that's another thing that's been debunked by senate select committee various other uh, 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 committees. And then forced rectal feeding was done for medical reasons? He just trots that out. And Chuck Todd says, well, look, there's no medical person who's validated that. Well, if you read uh, you know, Rodriguez's book, who is a notorious liar, notorious advocate of torture, who incidentally, before he went and administered all of this stuff, had his training ground in CIA operations in Latin America in the 1980s. I would not trust anybody coming out of operating in that environment. Well, just go look at the guy, the the person who administered the program's book, who's already been publicly exposed as a liar multiple times. He'll explain why there was a medical reason for this bizarre Baroque torture policy that we implemented. Now, anyways, back to people who were murdered on September 11th. It's grotesque. And look, the Obama administration... There's a there's a pay there's a um, there's a line. Uh, I think it was used in the 1990s. I think it was about a Nazi war criminal or someone who had been complicit in Nazi crimes in France. And someone said, basically, this is an old guy. 
This wasn't like a senior level person. Um, let him, you know, let him die in his old age, basically. And someone said, the page of history needs to be written before it can be turned. I think that people should have been prosecuted for engaging in torture program. And I think it was a serious mistake of the Obama administration uh, to not, and, and they're still refusing to release photos of detainee abuse. Uh, and this was a major decision within the first couple of weeks of the incoming administration to not release photos then. I think that was with regard to Abu Ghraib. Uh, they did not pursue that path. And it was wrong. But if you wanted to say, we could have had a process uh, by which we wanted to make a decision that people wouldn't be legally accountable for this, for some greater good. Well, there's another country, a country that, you know, in fact, had people who were involved in worse crimes. And that was, of course, South Africa under the apartheid regime. And they had a Truth and Reconciliation Commission. And apartheid agents, as well as some people from the African National Congress and other political parties, but obviously primarily the apartheid regime, they had to publicly state what their crimes were, have a full accounting of them and an explanation of them. And, you know, look, if you're Dick Cheney, he's proud of it. He thinks he did the right thing. Another really dis- People, this needed to be fully, fully public aired. It's pathetic that this Senate report is coming out in 2014 and we're relitigating a past that has never been fully aired at all. And Dick Cheney can still come out and lie and exploit the victims of September 11th to justify these policies that failed anyways. And that is definitely partially the result of the Obama administration not choosing to heal and move forward, but to simply ignore. And those are very different things. Go ahead. Another extremely uh, disturbing part from that interview Dick Cheney did on Meet the Press with Chuck Todd was when he seemed to just brush off and not even just brush off, be completely cool and fine with the fact that there were innocent people who were detained and tortured. Absolutely. Uh, Like, uh, I remember specifically where uh, Chuck Todd's telling him about some of the cases where these people were innocent and they got tortured. And one man who froze to death while being chained to a wall. Right. Um, and he says something like, uh, I have no problem with that. As long as we achieved our objective, I'd do it again in a minute. Just there you go. So disturbing. I mean that, and that's, and that's his mentality. And that's a person who, um, you know, all right. Bunch of civilians died in Iraq. Achieved the objective. (laughs) 